As a fun little project, I made a web app that lets me make personalized jewelry or magnets out of Wordle results. And now you can use it too. Greetings, printing enthusiasts. My name is Vicki Soma. This is Tball 3D. In today's episode, we are going to talk about making customized Wordle jewelry with OpenSCAD. There's going to be two sections to this video. Uh, first off, I imagine a lot of you just want to use the web application and make your own STL file for 3D printing. So we're going to start with that, just a little tour of the site and how you can use it. Then, if you're interested in learning more about the technologies behind it, the OpenSCAD project that I made for the 3D modeling, or how I use the command line features of OpenSCAD to automate it, then we'll dig into a little more details there. First off, if you're just looking to make 3D models out of your own Wordle results, then go to 3dmodels.tgall.com. I do prompt you for some information to make your model, and next to each item there's a little question mark. You can click on that and grab more details about what I'm looking for in that particular field. Let's do a quick rundown. Height of each color tile section. This 3D model is assuming that you're going to be doing color changes at different stages of your print. So it's always going to start off with a backing, which is just the background behind all of the little letter cubes, letter squares. Uh, it's going to print that. And then after that, it's going to switch over to the color that uh, we are using for your wrong guesses. Uh, then it's going to go to the color for your misplaced letters, your letters that are in the word but in the wrong place. And then finally, it's going to print the color for your correct letters. The next field is model type. So right now you can choose between earring pendant or a magnet slash tile. Your model type is going to dictate the final dimensions of the 3D model, as well as whether or not there's going to be a hole for hardware like we do for um, earrings and a pendant. Include unused guesses. As you know, we have six guesses to get our five letter Wordle word. Hopefully you're not using all of those guesses. If you aren't, then this is where this setting will come into play. If it's checked, as you can see here, uh, it's going to include white space for all of your unused guesses. Um, this is going to make sure that all of your prints are going to have a very consistent shape. If it's unchecked, then the final 3D model is only going to be as big as the guesses that you did use. In this case, this is a, a delightful two guess event. And finally, your Wordle results. Uh, here, just hit the share button, the same one that you would hit to share your results on social media. The application should support the normal theme, the dark theme, as well as colorblind mode. So you just come in and paste in your results. And then you'd hit download 3D model. And at this point, the application does its work. And then it's going to download the 3D model to your computer where you can go ahead and slice and print it. The 3D modeling portion of this application is done in OpenSCAD. And if you're interested in how I made that 3D model and also how I integrated it in, then stick around. All right, so here is what the 3D modeling code in OpenSCAD looks like. Uh, we start off with some variables at the top. Uh, this will include some familiar things like, hey, how many guesses did you use? Uh, your cube size is the little square that we're doing for each individual letter. How big is that? Uh, what's the space in between those cubes? Our background uh, that's holding everything, all the different letters, how thick is it? And then we have include backing, and this is just gonna be, are we including a little bit of extra padding at the top and a hole for earrings and a pendant. Include unused guesses goes back to exactly what we we're seeing on the previous screen there. The letters variable is where we're gonna record our different layer heights uh, for each individual letter. So that'll dictate what color it comes out as in the final print. So if we format it a little bit differently, we can kind of see the relationship uh, between these layer heights and the original Wordle results. Everything that was a wrong answer is set at 0.5 millimeters high. Everything that is a misplaced letter is one millimeters high. And then everything that is a correct letter in the right place is 1.5 millimeters high. Back to our code, our board width is how wide is our little piece going to be? And this is gonna be related to the number of letters. And in Wordle, we are looking at five letter words. So it's gonna be our cube size times five. And then if you look, there's actually gonna be six margins. There's five cubes and six margins. There's always gonna be one more margin than the number of cubes. 
The board height is going to be sensitive to whether or not we want to include our unused guesses. If we're including our unused guesses, then that's going to be six guesses. Wordle gives us six tries to get the word. And it's just like the board width, it's going to be the cube size times six. And then there's going to be one extra margin over the how many cubes that we have. And if we're not including those guesses, then the board height is going to be sensitive to the number of guesses that we did make. And don't forget our margins. And again, there's going to be one extra margin over how many guesses that we have. And here's a line of code where we're actually making the cube our backing. Let me um, highlight that for you. So it's in red. And you can see our parameters being passed in, our board width, our board height, and our board thickness. And next, we're going to loop through all of the guesses that we did take. And then for each of those guesses, we're going to loop through every five letters that are part of that guess. And the first thing we're going to do is look at our letters variable. Uh, we're just going to pass in the position of what guess and what letter we're on and retrieve how high that particular cube needs to be to get to the right color. Over here is where we're making the cube. It's going to be square. So there's cube size, cube size plus that thickness that uh, we retrieved. And over here is this is where we're moving the cube into the right place. And this is gonna be sensitive to what guess we're on and what letter we're on. Finally, for earrings and pendants, we are including a little bit of a backing, a little buffer and a hole so we can attach some hardware. And this is the code that's gonna do it. Uh, we are making a extra cube. Let's highlight that for you. Uh, and then what we're going to do is subtract a little cylinder from it right there. This difference feature in OpenSCAD is just saying, hey, the bottom thing, subtract from the top thing. I have used OpenSCAD before. We've seen it with the customized Valentines. You've seen it with the spinning pokey stop. Um, but there is a feature that I haven't tapped into before that really makes it powerful and makes it really important for this particular application. And that feature is command line usage. And that means we could take advantage of all of the power of OpenSCAD without ever opening the application. And so in the user manual, it shows us how to do that. So the first thing that you're gonna do is say, hey, I'm running OpenSCAD. And then you can pass in options, which we'll talk about in a second. And the final thing is what OpenSCAD file are we working with? And so in my case, I would be working with my Wordle SCAD file that I was just showing you. Let's talk about those options. In my case, I use the dash O option, which is what is your output file? And this gives me the ability to say, hey, I'm going to make an STL file and this is going to be the exact name for it. The other one I took advantage of is the slash capital D. And it has to be a capital D because down below, there is a lowercase d that does something else. So with our uh, dash capital D, what this allows us to do is all those variables you saw in my open SCAD file a second ago, I am able to put in what I want those values to be to send in to my project. Thanks to the in-depth user manual, I was able to author my own command line and let's dissect it a little bit here. So open SCAD.exe, this is the open SCAD program that I'm going to be running and passing all this information to. Then I have my dash O parameter, uh, which is just my output file. And you can see I get very detailed with how I'm naming my files. Next, we have our whole battery of dash capital D. And um, this is my variable values that I'm passing over to the application. How many guesses do I want? What are the margins? What are the cube sizes? And most importantly, all my letters, what height are they at, which is going to mean what color they're going to be. Finally, the last piece of information is the path to the OpenSCAD project, my 3D modeling project that we were just showing you. And so it knows what it's passing those variables to. As an illustration of what that command line can do is I can just come over here to DOS prompt and paste that in and it will go ahead and start making my 3D model and exporting out to an STL without me ever opening up the OpenSCAD program. Now, I am not personally running the command line for every single request that's coming in through the website. I have code that is doing that. So in my case, my little web application is using C Sharp, it's MVC, it's ASP.NET, it has some bootstrap going on there, so I'm getting all my buzzwords in. But 
I want to stress that it doesn't matter what programming language that you use, as long as you're able to launch a process and send along arguments, you can take advantage of OpenSCAD and its capabilities. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, um, but just a quick view of my website. Uh, this is just like a little HTML form that's prompting for all the different values and capturing your Wordle results. Behind the scenes, my C-sharp code, its main job is just to take your preferences there and um, put it in a format that is going to go to open SCAD. So I'm grabbing um, what your model mode is, um, whether or not you want to include the unused results. And probably the most interesting part is uh, replacing the Wordle results with the proper height of the little letter cubes. This I thought was going to be super easy. I was just a handful of characters that I would be replacing. Uh, though after I made the website live, I got to know that uh, the international Wordle results have different characters. So I had to quickly make a replacement and put those in. And here I am making my file name for my STL file that OpenSCAD is going to export. I do put a timestamp on it just to try to make it unique. I have a series of settings just telling the system uh, where is the OpenSCAD executable, uh, where is my output directory, uh, where is my 3D model file that we are going to be working with. And here, this is pretty much what I was doing through command line. I am opening up the OpenSCAD executable and I'm passing it my, my, just my little battery of, of arguments. I wait for OpenSCAD to finish up and then here I load up the STL file that it exported and I stream it down to the browser, AKA you. That's today's video. If you are interested in seeing my OpenSCAD project or maybe even my C Sharp MVC code, I'll put that on GitHub and the link will be down below. Uh, either way, I hope you have fun with the application and thank you for watching. Have a great day.